Hey, good morning, all of you. E and my topic uh, is got over last session, and to continue with uh, bar magnet and magnetic materials. Simple, but uh, a different topic for all of our examinations. First of all, bar magnet. I am briefing things uh, in a very very short time about bar magnet. <coughs> Pole strength used with the symbol small m. We know about the poles, the regions of the magnet where the magnetism means supposed to be concentrated. It is more pronounced in those regions are called as magnetic poles. The SI unit is ampere meter. See, do remember in magnetism and magnetic materials, the symbols are and, and also the units. Very, very important. Hmm? Take care of that. SI unit is ampere meter and it is a scalar quantity. It is a scalar quantity and pole strength of a bar magnet does not depend upon length of the magnet. It depends only on two things. Number one, the degree of magnetization, and number two, the thickness, otherwise we call the cross-section of the magnets. Now, when it comes to the degree of magnetization, most of the times we always consider saturated magnetism details go through your notebook and that is why now we simply take the pole strength depends only on the thickness of the magnet not on the length or any other aspect second one is the dipole moment when there is the question of pole in the case of uh, electricity the two charges are there positive and negative charges and they can be isolated. We can have isolated positive charge and isolated negative charge. Whereas in the case of magnetism, the pole is nothing but the magnetic charge. See, the magnetic charge is such that in the case of naming the magnetic poles, one is called as north pole, the other pole is called as south pole, such that the magnetic north pole is analogous to electric positive charge and the south pole analogous to negative electric charge like that and in the case of magnetism in the case of magnetism magnetic poles can never be isolated we cannot have isolated north pole and isolated south pole whenever we take that it is only an idealization so poles cannot be separated magnet is always a dipole and hence a dipole moment defined as look at the symbols Symbols should not confuse you and symbols should give you a confidence. I am using a symbol capital M because only I have used small m for pole strength. But according to NCRT books or the books that you are following, maybe small m used for dipole moment. But I have used pole strength and hence small m, this is capital M for dipole moment and defined as, see, L, the length of the dipole multiply with the pole strength. Here I am writing as length of the dipole. What is meant by length of the dipole? The distance between the poles. Distance <coughs> between the poles we take it as magnetic length. One or two simple examples I show you, there you will understand. Sometimes also use this other symbol 2L. Here I am writing a general expression as length of the dipole times pole strength. And here once again, what will be the unit? Already I have told you about the pole strength, which is ampere meter times meter, therefore it is ampere meter square, the SI unit. Remember, ampere per meter square. No, it is ampere meter square. Where did we know that ampere per meter square? Current electricity, current density, I by A, ampere per meter square we have. Here also it is ampere meter, not ampere per meter. We have all the parameters, I mean we have all types of units in this. We have ampere meter, ampere per meter, ampere meter square, ampere per meter square. All these are things there and that is why be very careful about these uh, units. Now magnetic moment is a vector, it is a vector along axis line from south pole to north pole. We take that as a vector. Supposing if I have to show you how we take that vector, now see here. Supposing if this is what is a magnet, I take, and I said this is a north pole and this is south pole. Now what is that axis? We know that it is the line joining the 
poles and the midpoint, which we call the axial line. The force line perpendicular to axial line passing through the center of the dipole is called as equatorial line. So this is uh, now you see if I have to draw this vector, suppose this is a dipole magnet with the moment m. How to draw the vector vector along the axial line? From south pole to north pole, this is south pole and this is north pole, therefore this is how I draw the moment vector for the given dipole. So in the case of combination of uh, dipoles, in the case of bending of dipoles, uh, this angle between the dipole moment is very important thing, that is why drawing the moment vector is very important thing. So it is uh, a vector quantity. And now immediately I am just referring to some of the things. Here we said the post strength independent of length, but you can here you see M depending upon length as well and also post strength. Therefore, post strength depends on both length and as well as cross section. Post strength only on cross section we said. Now let us see some three to four regular popular cases in case of magnetic moment. First one I have begun with cutting off magnet. Here I have taken a magnet. Length capital L, mass, I mean sorry, post strength small m and dipole moment capital M. And uh, this is now being cut into, suppose I have cut into say some number and when n equal parts parallel to axial line. Parallel to axial line. Parallel to axial line means perpendicular to equatorial line. Therefore, whenever you are reading the question, don't just look for the parallel or perpendicular. Parallel to afterwards is such an important thing. I am now saying According to me, it is parallel to axial line that is perpendicular to equatorial line. Then, according to our previous discussion, now we can say we get n identical magnets. We get n identical magnets such that for each of the shorter magnets, now I am writing L dash is equal to L, no change in the pole strength. Right? Pole strength is independent, uh, depends only on the cross section. But length is not changing, L dash is equal to L, the top of the bigger magnet. Whereas, now you see, when it is divided parallel to axial line, the cross section is being changed. Therefore, for M dash, each of the magnet is equal to 1 by N times. Portion becomes 1 by N times. Therefore, moment becomes M by N times. Whether it is two parts or three parts, that will be there. Now, if, if it is both the cases, we take like uh, cutting parallel to axial line and both perpendicular to axial line. X parts parallel to axial. Parallel does not give any change of magnetic line, and perpendicular that perpendicular to axial line does not give any change with respect to post strength. Therefore, here what happens? Earlier we said n equal part. Then we get n identical magnets. Here what we get? Now we get x into y number of, this number you see, x into y number of magnets we get. Suppose if this is a two parts and this is four parts, two into four, eight like that. x into y number of magnets, each of, now I am writing, each of, now you tell me, if I say m dash, m dash is equal to, m dash is equal to m by x because parallel to x and line change of post and m dash equal to m by x and l dash is equal to perpendicular cutting will give l dash so that is what is l by y and this gives us to m dash is equal to yes <coughs> m by x y so both the things coming and therefore m dash is equal to m by x y this is for each of the magnet so in the case of cutting of the magnet the wording is very important, parallel, perpendicular and again parallel, perpendicular to which of the case is an important thing. Suppose we extend our discussion like uh, bending of the magnets. Yeah, north pole, south pole, small m, the pole strength, yeah, the magnetic length, the dipole length and capital M, the dipole moment. This is a straight needle, straight magnet. Now supposing bending, bending also different different possible cases. I'm just trying to show you some two to three <coughs> different ways. Now, supposing if it is bent at the center, <coughs> it is bent at the center like this. So, the, when it is bent at the center, length of the, each of them becomes L by 2. And this angle made by the two parts of the center happens to be theta, suppose. Then, <coughs> we know that uh, dipoles, 
always like poles, polar poles, it does not exist the North Pole, South Pole, North Pole, South Pole, this is n by 2 and m by 2. Now the point is that drawing the vectors, right, along the axis from South Pole to North Pole. Look at this, this is South Pole to North Pole, yes. <coughs> this is m by 2, is that okay? This is m by 2, but now here, in this case, this is not m by 2, remember, why? Because it is north and south and it is from south pole to north pole therefore this is what is the second vector with m by 2 and this angle is going to be theta therefore this angle is 180 minus theta right so now using our parallelogram law of addition so net moment is equal to yes m by 2 square plus m by 2 square since angle is 180 minus theta, cos of 180 minus theta becomes minus of cos theta. Therefore, this is minus of minus of 2 m square by 4 sin theta. So this is what is the answer you get. Now that simplification, we always know that you know since the time has come, I'm telling you. Supposing r is equal to root of p square plus q square minus 2 p q cos theta form you have taken. If P is equal to Q, R is equal to 2P sine of theta by 2. Is that right? Supposing in the case, what is that? Minus 2P cos theta form, P is equal to R equal to 2P sine of theta by 2. Supposing if it is plus, then the result R is equal to 2P cos of theta by 2. That substitution for um, faster use I am telling you, for a quicker use I am telling you, using that expression here, here what is the net magnetic moment we are getting? This is 2 times m by 2 sin of theta by 2. So the answer is m sin of theta by 2. m sin of theta by 2. It is not m sin theta whole by 2. No, it is m sin of theta by 2. So that is what it is. Now in this case of bending, do remember no change in, in, in the portion. What is happening here, that is what earlier I was mm, mentioning, North Pole and South Pole, this is now what happens to be length of the dipole. But here, when it is bent, no change in portion, but <coughs> effective dipole length is changing. Therefore, in this case, Moment become m sine of theta by 2. Why? Because L dash, the new magnetic length of this system, L dash equal to L sine of theta by 2. Supposing in this example, if it is asked about the effective magnetic length and change of magnetic length, right, dipole length, then you see L dash is equal to L sine of theta by 2. That is what is our take from this one. Every time, every result, we should use our concept in such a way that it enhances our uh, our uh, approach for any of the questions. In fact, the concept as a whole should be more uh, and more digesting every time. So this here is a case of bending. Supposing I take one more type of bending. In that bending, in that bending, supposing I say I have bend it in the form of a yes equilateral triangle. Supposing equilateral triangle this is bent then what will be like this it's again north south north south north south <coughs> you get arrangement of now three dipoles and since length is equally divided you can see one of them is m by 3 m by 3 m by 3 again here this m by 3 is due to the fact of yes change in magnetic length and not any no, no change in matic uh, portion. Now in this example again you, you try to draw the vector south pole to north pole, south pole to north pole, south pole to north pole. Supposing if you do that, you see what happens. This is south pole to north pole, one vector. This is again south pole to north pole, yes, one vector. This one is also south pole to north pole, one vector. And since these angles are uh, 60, I have told you equal at triangle, then all this will be m by 3, m by 3 and m by 3, each of them angles will be 120, 120 degrees you will get. So three equal magnitudes, not I said three equal vectors, no I said three equal magnitudes and all of them 
any two with angle 120, yes, you can do your vector addition, net magnetic moment will be zero. Net magnetic moment will be zero. Like, supposing the same bending, I make one more change. One more change, suppose again I said, this is now bent in the form of a U shape, supposing. They have told us, bent in the form of U shape. Then again you write as three parts N, yes, N, S, N, S. Why? Because magnetic poles cannot be isolated. That U principle will be used in identifying the poles. Again here this is nothing but same case of M by 3, M by 3 and M bar 3. Now what the diagram? South to north, one vector, yes. And opposite one is, yes, south to north. This one is M by 3, this one is M by 3. And this one is south to north, one more M by 3. These are equal and opposite, therefore they counter each other. They resulted is 0 and finally we are left with M by 3. So in this case of bending, the answer will be M by 3, like that. So, in the case of bending, how to write the moments of each of the part is part 1. And as a second step, what we need to do is that angles and drawing those vectors that will give us the answer. Supposing, see, here in this example, suppose in this example, now the bending, but I said that, yeah, let me take the same case of bending. Here this is what is force 20 m length, L magnetic moment m. Right? Now this time it is uh, bent in the form of an arc. Arc shaped uh, we are getting. Such that this arc angle is uh, theta. Arc angle is theta. One more time what you find is that this is what is n dash and s dash. Poles coming closer. Poles coming closer. Magnetic, I mean the, the dipole length is decreasing. No change in pole strength. Therefore, one more time here we will find that the decrease in magnetic moment when when a straight needle is bent in the form of an arc. Therefore, now here the new length is L dash, no change in pole strength m. The new length is L dash and the new moment is m dash. Such that, of course, we did that simplification in the classroom. Now you take that result as L dash is equal to. L dash is equal to 2L sine of theta by 2 by theta. 2L sine of theta by 2 by theta, the new pole strength and hence, and hence M dash is equal to 2M <coughs> sine of theta by 2 by theta. Both the results you do, please remember. And when you are doing that, don't forget this number 2, of course. And one more thing, what is that M refers to? M is that of straight angle. M dash refers to the bent form, bent, uh, bent angle. Remember, we not always that straight is made into bent. Maybe question is there, just reversal, bent made straight also. So that is why no question, please don't take it, ever take it for granted. Read the question thoroughly and fully, then only use your fundamentals. <coughs> so new magnetic length and new magnetic moment. And one more important thing is substitution of theta, theta to be substituted in radian. Supposing if I say this is bent in the form of quadrant of a circle, quadrant of a circle. So Quadrant of a circle, then it, uh, quadrant of a circle means theta is equal to 90 degrees and that is what I have told you to be taken in radians. Then the value is m dash is 2 n sine 45, it becomes 1 by root 2 and the theta value is pi by 2. So finally you got the answer as 4 n by root 2 pi, the new this one. And I, of course, number of times I have told you even in the classroom that whether we are finding the changed value or change in value is important. M dash is the new moment. Supposing asked you for what is the change in moment, then it is M difference M dash. That is what final minus initial value we take, whether increase or decrease, that will be there. Now this is for M dash, the same will, be, will, will hold good for even in the case of magnetic length. So bending of the magnet cases 
is uh, an important point for our NEET examination. See, earlier one we have told one example. Let me have a small change in that, how to make use of uh, our vector addition. How to make use of our vector addition. Yes. Now supposing I said three identical magnets. I said three identical magnets each of moment capital M are arranged to form an equilateral triangle. Equilateral triangle such that at each of the vertex or each of the corners unlike poles are N, yes, N, yes, N, yes. So this is what is the arrangement of the magnets. Now what is the net magnetic moment? Earlier we did the same case, you remember? M by 3, M by 3, M by 3 we take with all unlike poles at each of the corner. What was the answer? Zero it was, right? Here also, because of that M, 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 angle 120, 120, 120, the net magnetic moment will be zero. I need not explain you one more time. Now in this case, supposing if one of the magnets is reverse, one of the magnets is reverse, what will be the case? One of the cases, important cases for our discussion. Earlier the figure was, you remember, this was our figure, M, M, and one more M, and is being 120, we said. Now if one of the magnets is reversed, what happens? What happens? This magnetic moment will also be like this. This is what is M. Now, earlier, Earlier, this capital M and capital M, 120 degrees, the result was S again capital M and this capital M and one more M equal and opposite giving result as zero. But now this is what happened. One of the magnets reversed, then it will be M and M, two M's parallel. Therefore, in this case, suppose one of the magnets reversed, he says, suppose here I have reversed south pole and north pole. In this case, net magnetic moment is equal to how much? Yes, it will be 2m. One of the magnets removed, answer is 2m. Now, we have the first case where three identical magnets forming an equivalent triangle, unlike poles at each of the corners, net magnetic moment is 0. One of the magnets reversed, the answer is 2m. Now, supposing I said one of the magnets removed, one of the magnets removed. When is what is the case I am discussing? Initially, three identical magnets at three corners, unlike poles, uh, uh, appearing. In such case, we have told one of the magnets is removed. Supposing one of the magnets is removed, you just don't get this third vector. Then you have only M and M. What is the angle between that? 120 degrees. And our vector results will tell you that this M and M, 120 degrees, the result is also M. Right? Therefore, we have all the cases. Supposing if this magnet is removed, then here the angle between them will be net magnetic moment will be M only. Now, this case I have discussed for three magnets forming an equilateral triangle, net magnetic moment reversing one or two, or removing one or two. The cases I have discussed. Now the same you can also. Just do it as a whole for the case of four magnets identical forming a square. What are what all the different possibilities that you can take in the same way? All corners, uh, unlike poles appearing, what is the result? If one of the magnets is removed, what is the result? If two magnets are removed, what is the result? If one of the magnets is reversed, what is the result? That you can do for the geometry of square and four magnets as well, right? Because this will give you a hint that whatever you did in this case, the same you will do in the case of that as well. Now let us take that, actually I should have told you in the very beginning, but now I am telling you two dipoles, two dipoles, this is M1, not N1 and S1, supposing another magnet M2 with, uh, suppose I said N2 and S2. This is one possibility. Such that we can get. And what is the other possibility? Now here you can see this is what is N1, S1 and I will supposing theta but this time it is a S2, N2. These are the two possibilities for given magnets. So at this point like poles touching or unlike poles touching.
touching. Then what is that vector diagram that you get? Here is the vector diagram you get is south pole to the north pole. Yes, this is one vector. And one more vector is south pole to the north pole, this vector. If this angle is theta, this angle is also theta. Whereas in this case, what happens? So light force touching, whatever angle is shown in the figure, same will be the angle between their moments. Whereas in the case of unlike poles appearing at this point where theta is given, the angle between the moments should be 180 minus theta. It is not. Therefore, now I am writing you as in general net magnetic moment for two dipoles. It is m1 squared plus m2 squared plus or minus 2m1 m2 cos theta positive sign for light poles touching where the angle is given for that value we take positive value and unlike poles touching and angle is given to be theta they will use minus 2m1 m2 cos theta is the thing that I wanted to tell you now you see supposing two or three cases or two cases given as a single example what is that this is a Pole strength M, length L, magnetic moment M, such that divided into two equal parts, divided into two equal parts, and uh, one of them, one of them bent in the form of, bent in the form of semicircle, semicircle and the two parts are arranged like this suppose this is how it is arranged this is how the two parts are arranged such that he says this is n1 s1 and n2 s2 so this is how it is given now what will be the net magnetic moment for this arrangement so here we are using two concepts two or three concepts rather first one is first it is divided into two equal parts therefore m two equal parts therefore it is m by 2 m by 2 according to our discussion of cutting of the magnet and then one of the m by 2 is straight and the other one is bent in the form of a semicircle semicircle or uh, arc shape what is that we have told so this new moment this is what is uh, m1 and now this is what is m2 is equal to 2 m sine of theta by 2 theta semi circle 180 degrees pi by 2 by pi so this answer becomes m yes m by pi 2 cancel sine pi by 2 is 1 so m by 2 is equal to m by pi if now here draw the vectors south pole to north pole m1 south pole to north pole south pole to north pole this number is m by 2 the other one is also south pole to north pole you see that collinear vectors now it becomes so the other vector becomes m by pi m by pi so the net magnetic moment net magnetic moment will be add addition will give you 1 by 2 plus 1 by pi now i have shown a simple case here once again different types of orientations are possible so for those orientations we have to draw the vectors and then find the net magnetic moment cutting and bending both the cases given in a single example like this see drawing the vector diagrams is most important for all our second year topics like electrostatics electric field electromagnetics the vectors v bar and m bar it is always the knowledge of vectors which means Simpler things very difficult for an average student who does never any practice of these rules and uh, the idea of vectors. Now, one more important topic I would like to discuss with you that is only one or two expressions I want to give you. Supposing these are two poles, M1 and M2, I have named them two poles. Again, as I told you, poles can never, isolated poles never exist. A kind of idealization, let us take it for now, separation is what is? or the force, the famous Coulombic force F is equal to mu naught by 4 pi m1 m2 by r square m1 m2 by r square is the result that we have shown, right? Now this is of course in A this is in A the space between the poles is A this is what is the expression 
suppose if, if there is a medium, we write it as a mu naught times mu r by 4 pi m1 m2 by r square in other medium such that this mu r is what is called as a relative permeability. This mu naught is of course already we have used mu naught equal to 4 pi to 10 to minus 7 in Henry per meter. You remember that? So that was our mu r is the relative permeability. Relative permeability, therefore, this mu naught mu r is what is called as mu. This is called permeability of the medium. Relative permeability of the medium and absolute permeability. That is permeability of air or vacuum is what is taken. Now here mu naught and mu both have units and dimensions same which is Henry per meter. Mu R happens to be this ratio of same units. Therefore, mu R has no units or dimensions. We talk about mu R in the latter stage, another very important topic that one. Now here, the most important thing is I wanted to show you is instead of magnetic poles, instead of magnetic poles, if it is short dipoles, if it is the case of short dipoles, Say this is a dipole M1 moment and this is moment dipoles such that the distance between their centers. Now you see they have placed coaxially. Coaxially they are placed such that the distance between their centers is what is R. Earlier it was poles and separation. Now this time it is dipoles and separation. Therefore the given data is capital M1 capital M2. In this case you remember this expression f equal to the constant is the same mu naught by 4 pi of course we are writing it in a this is 6 m1 m2 by r rise 4 earlier for poles it was inverse square relation f proposed to 1 by r square for given dipole <coughs> i am taking the case of short dipoles it is a f proportional to 1 rise r power 4 so this is an important topic i want to convey now here once again the case of a possibility of uh, a neutral point or null point. For a neutral point or null point, I will take up as the next case also. But here itself, just I want to show you one thing. In this case, supposing these are M1 and M2. I said this is N1, S1 and this is N2, S2. N1. And then look here, look here. This, so this is what is S2 and N2. Now, for this case, we will see that light poles are facing, both are quite placed and of course light poles facing in, for such case only, we will get the concept of null point or the neutral point where any magnetic pole experiences zero resultant force. And uh, I want to give you an expression because I, there are, we, we have to do that F1 is equal to F2, two forces. Uh, um, at a given point, suppose if this is what is the neutral point, I call it as M. At this point, two equal and opposite forces. Supposing this distance, I take it as B from this M1 first magnet, then the distance of null point is equal to R under root of M2 by M1 whole rise 1 by 3 plus 1. So this will be the result that you get. And this is from M1. Remember what is the definition of M1 here? Supposing if I want to find the first magnet, I am writing the distance M2 by M1. This distance is from the first magnet. If I write it as M1 by M2, yes, that will give the distance from the second magnet. So looking to the options is very, very important. Supposing I get 4 cm from shorter mag uh, weaker magnet, I will get it as 6 cm from stronger. Supposing the distance between them is 10 cm. Like that. Few examples I will show you in later. Please do remember this expression. Because we have given very few such formulae to have a memory. And this is uh, what is uh, important and simple one to make your uh, solution easier and giving you then and there few few uh, memory tips. Otherwise, we are using only the case of concept. Now, for a dipole, for a magnet, another very important concept is the magnetic induction. Already we have defined the capital B, the magnetic induction in the electromagnetics. We have used that vector. 
very extensive, right? Now, how do we define capital B here? This capital B is force experienced by test not pull at a given point. Remember, this is very much similar to what we did in the case of electricity, electric field intensity at a point. So, intensity is always defined at a point. So, B is equal to F by N naught, and that is by force Newton, and this is what is ampere meter. That is why B has the unit of, yes, Newton per ampere meter. Earlier we have given as vapor per meter square and Tesla as well. And also C this unit is that. So for in now the case of a now the case of a dipole. This dipole also I am giving you a general result first. Suppose this is north pole and south pole. Yes. Here now I consider length as a 2L for mathematical. Simplification, mathematical comfort, I have taken a 2L. And then all we have used capital L. For the case of bar magnet, I said 2L is the length of the magnet. This is what is the axial line and this is what is equatorial line. Now for any point, either it is an axial line or equatorial line or any other point, the distance is always taken from center of the dipole. This is the center of the dipole from which we are taking the distances. Now, the useful expressions are B axial is equal to, yes, mu naught to M R by R square plus X, sorry, R square minus L square whole square is the expression that we get. Mu naught, of course. 4 pi term is there, mu naught by 4 pi, 2 m r by r square, small r, the distance of the axial point from the center. And here you see, when you see this L, L is not the length of the magnet, but it is half length of the magnet because we have taken it as 2 L. So this is, and direction is parallel to, parallel to m r. This is what we have been using, uh, we have been using in electromagnets and as well as electromagnetic induction. Remember B M bar along the uh, along B bar if it is yes axial point whereas B equatorial is equal to again mu naught by 4 pi this time you get M by R square plus L square whole 3 by 2. This is what is the expression that you get. What is the direction? Supposing if this is what is the equatorial point, do look at the point and the vector that I am drawing. Now, at, at this point, the induction is directed like this. This is what is the vector B equatorial. How is that vector? Parallel to axial line, directed from south pole to north pole. So, this is opposite to M bar. Opposite to M bar. B bar and M bar angle may be a very simple conceptual question but very important. If that is axial point, it is parallel to B bar and if it is on the equatorial line, it is yes, anti parallel to B bar. One important thing to be remembered or M bar. Now, one more important point I would like to tell you of course, we never make use of these things for our CT and NEET and therefore, we are taking the case of short dipole. So, for short dipole, I am writing the equations equatorial is equal to yes, mu naught by 4 pi 2m by r cube and uh, sorry, axial let me write and the equatorial point it is mu naught by 4 pi this is m by r cube. So, these are the very popular results that we use for our exam. And what are two to three important things that you can see here? Whether it is B axial or B equatorial. In the case of short dipole, B proportional to 1 by R cube. It is inverse cubic relation. B proportional to 1 by R cube. So different distances. Finding B is important thing. B1 by B2 ratio R2 by R1 4 power 3 like. So this is one take that I am taking. What is the second take that I am taking? Okay, here you will find that axial and equatorial when you are writing the expressions, this is two term is the difference between them when, when the distance is the same at both axial and equatorial point. Therefore, now I am writing my second take as if R axial is equal to two, I mean R equatorial, same distance point, then B axial is 
2 times b equal to origin is one more take that I want to take for same distance case supposing if it is the other case like the third take I am taking suppose if b axial is same as b equal to origin so one point happen one point at axial line another point on the equator line and such that intensity is same in magnitude I am telling you all these things when I am saying I am taking the scalars the magnitudes only in this case what happens you equate this to what you get R axial is 2 rise 1 by 3 times R equatorial is another important result I want to take you so these results and the 3 takes are very very useful for us for some uh, direct answers for the questions and also in the other cases like we, are, we, we deal with the case of null points or semantic induction then for the quick calculations also these things will be very very helpful so these are the to topics that we have discussed and uh, remember all our examples most of our examples is meant only for the crash program of me and CET we are not getting into the details of any advanced or JE mains as such second thing one more time big request from my side go through assignments do your assignments after practicing this uh, synapses part Mr. also have mentioned that slowly we start listening to the good news regarding these lockdowns and the corona and all some exemptions given in the lockdown and in the coming weeks we definitely hear more and more good news and that is why be with prepared uh, mindset be with your preparation do very good preparation and this is your golden moments because post corona post corona period you have to make use of all your hard works like anything i'm telling you one more time post corona days very very tough days for the entire world in such case you please make sure that you are happy and you have made your families and parents happy because of all your smart work and good work that you have done during this period thank you and have a good day